Hello, and welcome to this introduction to sampling. When you are conducting research, you will most likely be studying a sample instead of an entire population. Yet in order to generalize from the sample to the full population, you have to have a representative sample. So let's talk about sampling. The best way to get a random sample, excuse me, a representative sample is through simple random sampling. And in that situation, I take my entire population and get a random sample from it. This is called probability sampling because if this is truly a random sample, there's a good probability that it will be representative of the entire population. You can also have what's called stratified random sampling. And in stratified random sampling, I already know what proportion of my full population is each of these subpopulations or groups within my population. So let's say, for example, that I know that one-sixth of my population is these white guys, one-half is blue, and one-third is pink. And I've determined that I want to have a full sample size of 24 out of my population of 60 of all of these guys total. That means that four of them would need to be white, 12 need to be blue, and 8 need to be pink. So what I would do is I would randomly select four, um, four participants from my white group, 12 from my blue group, and then randomly select eight from my pink group. And I would put all of those randomly selected folks from the different groups into my sample size. And that would be stratified random sampling, which can be considered representative sampling. My next kind of sampling is snowball sampling. And in this situation, I, let's say for example, decide that I want to study or interview a certain participant and I ask that participant to recommend someone else to me to interview and then I ask that person to recommend someone else etc 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 and that is how I get my sampling that's called snowball sampling the problem with snowball sampling is that people tend to recommend folks who are similar to themselves as opposed to a more diverse group that represents the full population. As such, snowball sampling cannot be considered to be representative sampling. The last kind of sampling I want to talk to you about today is what's called convenient sampling. So in this situation, you have a researcher, and the researcher wants to study some sort of topic or phenomenon, and so the researcher just selects the participants who are most convenient. And while this may seem cavalier or even lazy, it's actually more common than you might expect because we in social science have to have willing participants, voluntary participants, and especially in education, it can be sometimes difficult to secure a research site. As such, we sometimes need to use convenience sampling. Now, when you're talking about sampling, you need to consider your sampling error. And sampling error is the difference between your sample mean, which is represented by a capital M, and your population mean, which is represented by this Greek symbol known as a mu. And so sampling error is something that we will be attending to throughout our investigation of inferential statistics. As always, thank you, and please let me know if you have questions.